Welcome to the Chinese Wushu Training Series. The techniques illustrated in this program are the foundation for further study in Tangquan, weapons, or other styles of Wushu. We are glad to have four members of the Beijing Wushu team to do the demonstration for us. Ms. Zhou Jingping, Ms. Hui Xuna, Mr. Yin Yu Zhu, and Mr. Zhang Xianming. The flexibility of the hamstrings is of utmost importance to the Wushu artist. When doing the front stretch, make sure that the back and both legs are straight. It is necessary to do dynamic stretching as shown here bouncing up and down to simulate the action of an actual kick. Stretch every day and flexibility could be noticeably gained. Set up a progressive schedule. First try to touch the forehead to the toes. Then go for the nose touching the toes. And further, the lips to the toes. Try to relax the muscles in the leg and use the arms to pull. There is probably an unlimited number of ways to stretch. Next, we will show you another effective stretch for Wushu practitioners, the side stretch. The stretching leg is totally on the side of the body. Bend at the waist, try to keep the back straight and not humped. Next, different kicking exercises. First, the front kick. Just like doing stretching, both legs and the back must be straight. Notice that the foot is flexed, not pointed. The side kick. The leg kick up in the front, cross the face and swing out as wide as possible. Here's a front view of the outside crescent kick. The foot hits the hands as soon as it passes the face, hitting first the left hand and then the right. Make sure that the hands are very close to each other. This is the opposite of the previous technique. The leg comes up from the side, crosses the face and then drops down on the other side. Here is the front view. Turn the foot in such a way that the hand slaps the bottom of the foot. The previous are straight-legged kicks. The next two are snapped from the knee. For the side thrust kick, the power is focused at the outside edge of the heel. For the front thrust kick, power is focused at the bottom of the heel.
Next, several stances will be demonstrated. The bow stance should be low enough such that the front thigh is flat and parallel to the floor. The weight of the body is totally on the back leg. The weight of the body is rested on the back leg. The foot of the back leg is pointed as the bottom sits on the floor. There are three forms of the hand. The fist, the palm, and the hook hand. The thrust punch is the most basic strike. First, the fist is tucked tightly at the waist. During the extension of the arm, be careful to keep the elbow close to the body and not swing out. Keep the palm side of the fist facing up until the last 10 inches of the punch. Then flip the wrist over with a snap. Here you can see clearly that the shoulder is used to help extend the punch but don't stiffen up the shoulder muscles too much. Keep the two sides level as they switch back and forth. Try to relax the entire arm and not use strength until the snap at the end. The punch should be just about as high as the throat. The thrust punch is often incorporated into stance work. Here are a few examples. Make sure that the snap kick and the punch are executed at the same time. Keep the body low as it travels from one side to the other. Both feet are flat on the floor at all times. The leading arm should have good extension throughout the transition from drop stance to bow stance. Here is a common way of practicing the drop stance and spear hand. There are two types of body turns. First, the single body turn. 
it is important that both arms are fully extended and that the body remains at the same angle during the turn. The eyes should look at the floor. The back is arched and the hip pushes up during the turn. The second one is the double body turn. Once the first turn is started, the arms remain totally extended at opposite sides. The two arms must line up to form a straight line. This exercise will increase the flexibility of the waist and the back. As the arms turn overhead, arch the back and push the hip forward. The waist is the pivot point for the torso's circular movement. The wheeling arms and slap is a very common technique of wushu. The arms form a straight line. The shoulder switches so that the arms can have good extension. Be sure that both feet are flat on the floor. The hand hits the floor close to where the extended foot is. A variety of other techniques may be connected to the wheeling arms and slap. Shown here is the upper thrust punch in a bow stance. Next, the slap fist. The arm swings must be fast and large. Both knees bent as the right fist hits the left palm, and the right foot stamps on the floor at the same time. Next are two postures that commonly follow the slap fist. First, the high stance. and the low empty stance with a palm strike in the front and a hook hand in the back. Here is a combination initiated by the slap fist. Take three steps in an arc and an inside crescent kick. The left leg is totally bent and the sweeping action must be fast. The right foot should scratch the floor all the way through the sweep. To maintain good balance, keep the head up and the back straight. From the bow stance, the arms first wind up by going left. Then the sweep is initiated by the arms moving to the right and down. Keep the right leg as straight as possible. Here is the first jumping technique. Notice that the body leans slightly backward in the air. Let's look at it again from a reverse angle.
This is the momentum gathering running start prior to the jump front kick. Jumping off the left foot, the right foot hits the left heel in the air. Here is a different kind of skip. It is a hop on the right leg. Also do this exercise to warm up the knees for further jumping. Do the front slap kick to prepare for the jump front kick. The gap between the two slaps should be small. Now let's look at the two-step jump front kick. The right leg pushes the body in the air, then executes the front slap kick. the running jump front kick. It is also the right leg that pushes off. Snap the right kick quickly and also bring it down quickly to make the landing. Make sure that the right foot is pointed. And keep the left leg tucked as high as possible.
the right leg pushes off and does an inside crescent kick in the air. The swinging action of the arm is vertical, not horizontal. Notice that just before the takeoff, the feet are about a shoulder's width apart. First, a skip on the right leg as the body curves to the right. The right arm drops, then goes up again to help raise the body as the right leg jumps. The left leg may remain straight as shown here or tucked. The right leg makes a quick outside crescent kick in the air, hitting both hands. There should be enough spinning action to carry the body around completely.
Good speed is required for the cartwheel. As the leg is about to push off, the arms go back, then swing forward and up as the left leg pushes hard to lift the body. The legs must travel fast to complete the circle before the body drops. Keep the back straight and do not tuck the head. This will help keep the body afloat in the air. The left knee must be bent to give a good push off. Then both legs become straight in the air. There are two actions here, a horizontal sweep of the body and an upward push by the left leg. The arms are far apart and swing with the body very strongly to the left. As the body passes over the left leg, the left leg pushes hard to lift the entire body.
The legs swing high as the body lifts, but the body should remain on a horizontal plane. The approach is exactly like that of a regular butterfly. When the body is in the air, bring in the arms and twist to the left. The twisting action must be quick, and landing is made on the left foot. The body need not swing horizontally as hard as in the regular butterfly. And do not start to twist until the body is fully in the air. Next, we will show you some popular combinations of aerial techniques. First, 
the jump front kick into the jump inside crescent kick. After the jump front kick, the body leans and turns slightly to the left. The jump front kick into the jump outside crescent kick. As opposed to the previous combination, lean and turn slightly to the right after the jump front kick. The jump front kick into the aerial cartwheel. The snap of the right leg must be very fast to allow time to prepare for the takeoff of the aerial cartwheel. Next, the jump front kick into the butterfly kick with a full twist. Next is a group of aerial techniques and landing combinations. First, the jump inside crescent kick into a horse stance. Notice that the left leg tucks in the air before landing in the horse stance. The jump inside crescent kick into a cross leg sit. For this combination, the right leg tucks behind immediately after the kick. The jump inside crescent kick into a split. The feet are wide apart when they land at the same time, then slide out into the split. Next, the jump outside crescent kick into the cross leg sit. Immediately after the kick, the right leg tucks behind the left. Keep the arms at the sides to maintain good balance. The outside crescent kick into a split.
The left leg must remain high and straight in the air. This will ensure that the feet will land wide apart and at the same time. The butterfly with a full twist into a split. As soon as the body is done with the twisting action, the feet have to separate. And this concludes the program of Wushu Basic Techniques.